Hi, my name is Matt Hinkle with Box Arm Training. Today I want to talk about determining flow through nozzle reaction. I actually spoke with Brian Brush last week. He was on his way to the Firemanship Conference in Portland, Oregon, and we talked about some of the research I had just finished, and he actually gave me some suggestions early on to do this. It was for the Executive Fire Officer Program at the National Fire Academy. Um, but the research that I did was to determine whether or not a firefighter could identify a problem at the nozzle, like a reduction in flow. Um, I really felt like a lot of firefighters don't pay attention to this. Um, they just kind of take it for granted that the, the flow from the nozzle is what it is, uh, but they don't pay attention to what happens if that's not right when they're on the nozzle, because that can get you in a pretty bad spot pretty quick. After talking with them, I kind of realized that I probably need to share this information with you uh, and the full research project if you want to read it. So it's available on my website if you want to read it, but I just kind of want to give you a summary and some recommendations on how to train for this. The Executive Fire Officer Program, I'm planning on doing a more in-depth video uh, down the road to kind of explain that process, but basically the way it works is you, you are required to do an applied research project. Uh, you do four of those, one each year. They're pretty in-depth. They take a good bit of time and energy. Uh, to do it correctly. So I chose to do mine on an area that I didn't I didn't think was very well researched. Um, there's some research absolutely out there about nozzle reaction, but there's very little research that's done to, to see if nozzle reaction can actually be used uh, or if we can actually use it to teach with, to actually teach firefighters how to identify certain problems that can happen. So first thing that you do when you do those research problems is you say, what what's the problem? So you gotta be able to identify a problem. So I couldn't research the problem and the solutions and everything that goes in between because the EFO program, they don't want you to do that. They want you to stay very focused and concise to identify a problem. Then down the road, I'm gonna approach the solutions to that problem. But I already have some uh, preliminary findings and I'm going to share that with you. So basically, what's the problem? Uh, my idea was that the problem is that the firefighter that's on the nozzle, uh, if something happens, they can't recognize that that happened. They could be flowing a considerably reduced rate of water in an interior fire attack and have no idea that that's going on. Um, when we do driver operator training and things like that, we typically say um, or we learn about friction loss and all these things, proper pump discharge pressure, all of that is to make sure that the proper nozzle pressure is at the nozzle. Um, but if the nozzle operator, the person that's on the nozzle, can't recognize that something's wrong, then the driver operator can't compensate for it. Nothing can happen because that person has no idea that anything has gone wrong. So what could go wrong? There's all kinds of things on the fire ground. We're not doing a lab test. We're talking about actual firefighting, kinks in the hose line, you know, any kind of um, problems with hose manufacturing or, you know, actual, actual problems with the hose line, problems with the actual nozzle itself. Um, there's all kinds of things that can happen and you got to be able to identify that something happened to correct it, to make sure you're not put in a bad spot. So we did research. I did a, I did a research project using a 1001-1-2 part one and two, uh, recruit course. They were in their last week of training and I wanted to see, did their training prepare them for what they were going out into the world to do. Um, which I know there's a lot of other things that they need to be trained on too. And we're talking about the minimum standard of training, but I found out in their last week of training, they've already been trained on all these other topics. Could they identify a reduction in their nozzle if we actually did that? So I reduced, we use several nozzles, but to summarize this, I used a 100 PSI fog nozzle flowing 125 GPM. So I reduced the flow of that nozzle by 25%. That's a big, big chunk. Uh, of water taken away from that firefighter. These firefighters were tested blindly. You know, they didn't know anything about this. I also told them to flow the water from the ground, from a position on the ground, as if you were in an interior fire attack. They didn't know which lines were pressurized correctly, what was incorrectly, but they had three hose lines that they flowed for up to one minute. That flow of 125 GPM was reduced by 25% because a uh, 180 degree kink can cause that type of a problem. That 25% reduction drops that flow all the way down to about 94 gallons a minute. And if you know anything about NFPA 1710, it drops it below the actual recommendations that NFPA has set forth. That's why I chose that rate to identify that specific problem that references a standard. Um, we found out that 46% of those students couldn't detect that difference. They didn't know that they had a 25% reduction in that flow, which is pretty staggering in my opinion, that nearly 50% of the firefighters tested couldn't identify that problem. Well, how do you train to correct that problem? One is 
we don't spend very much time on the nozzle. Uh, we don't flow that much water. We don't get in the positions that we actually fight in. We just kind of flow the line. So you need to flow the line from multiple positions, learn different techniques, flow from the ground, flow standing up, uh, move and then flow, all those different kind of things to make sure that you know how the line is supposed to operate and how it's supposed to feel. I reference this a lot, but when you talk about law enforcement officers and military, if they fired a weapon and they didn't feel the kickback from the weapon, they would know something went wrong. Um, and a nozzleman needs to be able to do the same thing. That's your weapon, and that's really all that stands in between you and the fire. So if you can't identify that there's a problem there, we've got an issue. You gotta be able to identify that. So that being said, this is not in the ARP because ARP is real specific, but I've already done some testing um, a little further down the road dealing with the training and could we improve the results? And we found out, we did a week long course, really detailed, uh, high repetition, advanced course, uh, engine company operations course that had the results at the end of the week after they'd done all these repetitions, 90% of those students could, could detect a 10% reduction in flow. Same test, you know, same style test. So to me, that kind of shows that we have the ability to do some curriculum changes and training, hands-on type training repetitions that can make that firefighter much more aware uh, of the problems to be able to identify those problems. What are the recommendations to train with? I think this is a big thing for everyone that's out there. You know, flow water from standing position, flow water from the ground, flow different size attack lines. If you have different nozzles, flow those different nozzles. Preset a reduction in flow. So take a nozzle, uh, use a flow meter or use a pitot gauge and determine this is what it's supposed to be, but drop it, drop it below what it's supposed to be. And then get out there and flow it and identify, hey, this is what it feels like when this line is not flowing correctly. Then do the same thing and flow it at the right pressure so that you can feel this is what it is supposed to feel like. And then while you're flowing water, let somebody kink a line down while you're flowing and say, this is what it feels like when it was flowing right to when it wasn't flowing right. So you can tell something just happened that dropped your flow. And that, that could be really dangerous. That could put you in a bad spot. So when the reduction is identified, so we can train on things about how do we fix the problem? How do we correct it? Once we say, hey, here's a reduction, can we cycle the line to get a kink out? Can we flush the nozzle to make sure debris out? What are the steps that we take to make sure whether we need to bail and get out or correct the issue very quickly and go ahead with the fire attack and make the push. That being said, I wanted to keep it fairly brief. If you want to read the full ARP, the Applied Research Project, I've got it on the website, www.boxalarmtraining.com. It's a PDF, so you can read the full article. Um, don't forget, if you like the video, give us a like, subscribe to us on YouTube. We're going to be doing these videos a lot more often. Um, and then we have a Facebook page, and you can check out the website. You got a lot more, we got a lot more resources, and we're going to be uh, attaching these videos into that site uh, so that you can share that. And uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you want to have specific questions answered for this style, uh, our segments that we're doing on YouTube, write a comment so we can answer those questions and get them for you. Thanks.